People are trying to look for those signals coming out of copper, and we're seeing a lot of weakness there for a fifth straight session here. We're a far cry from those days when people were calling for 10,000 or even 15,000, as one person called it. Maybe we get there long term, but I want you to talk more about the near term as exactly what's ailing that copper trade. Well, I think you had two dynamics in China. One, you had a very weak property market, and when everybody was bullish on uh, copper going back in May, the offsetting force was that strong green capex. So China was subsidizing and beefing up the green capex investment, EVs, solar panels, lithium batteries, and that strength was keeping strength in copper demand, offsetting the weakness in the property demand. What has happened since then? Um, the U.S. as well as Europe have responded with tariffs on some of these EV goods, slowing down that, that engine of growth for China. And at the same time, the policy focused at propping up the property market has you know, not come through as strongly as many people have thought. And so that weakness in the property market is currently dominating. So what does that mean to um, copper prices? It still has a floor based upon that strong structural supply story, but it has a cap on the upside based upon that that um, weakness in demand. I would say, you know, 8,500 type on the bottom, 9,500 on the top until we start to see the policy begin to create some strength in China. But I want to emphasize, China is not unraveling like a, a, a global financial crisis situation in any shape or form. You know, you look at, you know, WeChat pay numbers, it shows consumption up about 1%. Um, and yes, oil demand was a little bit weaker um, than what would the economics would suggest because you have trucks switching to LNG from diesel. Mm -hmm. But that's structural, that's priced in the market. So I want to emphasize, yes, it's weak, but it's nothing like the positioning.